Step into the world of Miami Vice, a classic TV series that made waves in the 1980s. This iconic show, renowned for its sleek style and pulsating soundtrack, follows two Vice detectives as they navigate the sun-soaked streets of Miami. Brace yourself for a journey filled with surprises, from behind-the-scenes stories to unexpected plot twists. The beauty of the series lies not just in its action-packed episodes, but also in the layers that unfold as you get to know the characters. As you immerse yourself in the world of Miami Vice, be prepared for moments that range from laughter to shock and sometimes a touch of sadness. Whether it's a funny, edge-of-your-seat scene or a reveal that tugs at your heartstrings, each episode is a new adventure. Now, I'm curious, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this TV series? Share your nostalgia, the laughter, or even the tears in the comments below. Let's make your Miami Vice journey our conversation starter. Get ready for a trip down memory lane with a show where every episode unfolds a new adventure. Funny, shocking, and sometimes a little sad, it's all part of the ride. In a brief reflection on the 1984 TV series Miami Vice, a viewer highlights several impressive aspects that contributed to the show's appeal. Beyond the well-portrayed characters and the pervasive dramatic atmosphere in the majority of the stories, the standout element is the music. Jan Hammer's keyboard artistry adds a distinct aura to the series, complementing the characters and stories while subtly intensifying the dramatic moments that elevate it beyond the typical cop series. The reviewer recalls the anticipation felt during the weekly airing of the show, emphasizing the unique experience it offered. As a viewer in high school in the UK during the series' heyday, the reviewer draws comparisons to local shows like The Bill and The Professionals acknowledging their merits but underscoring the unmatched visual and atmospheric elements of Miami Vice. The lavish scenery, cars, hotels, nightclubs, clothing, and weather in Miami left an indelible impression. The communal aspect of discussing episodes at school the day after airing is noted, drawing a parallel with contemporary shows like Game of Thrones. The reviewer reminisces about the iconic elements of the show, from Jan Hammer's music to the memorable scenes like the White Testarossa. The depiction of a glamorous American lifestyle, contrasting with the more mundane UK setting, added a captivating allure. The reviewer acknowledges the occasional cringeworthy acting, but emphasizes its integral part in the overall charm of the show. Even upon revisiting the series, the reviewer finds continued pleasure, noting that the absence of modern technologies like mobile phones and iPads goes unnoticed. The dated elements, such as large cellular phones and car phones, add a nostalgic charm. The review concludes with a recommendation for those who haven't watched the show to do so, along with a mention of other notable series like Hill Street Blues, Chicago Hope, and the early days of ER, Peace and Love. In maintaining Sonny Crockett's signature two-day stubble, Don Johnson relied on a sideburn trimmer for that rugged look. Interestingly, Crockett's character history aligns with Johnson's attempt to join the United States Marine Corps in the early 1970s, but a prior drug possession conviction prevented Johnson from serving, a stark contrast to Crockett's fictional combat tour in Vietnam. Lieutenant Martin Castillo, despite seldom participating in the show's shootouts, favored an imposing Colt Trooper MKV-357 Magnum with a six-inch barrel. This choice, seemingly incongruous for an administrative role, could be interpreted as a subtle power dynamic, perhaps a reminder to Sonny Crockett about who wielded the bigger gun. Miami Vice's attention to detail in character traits and weapon choices adds nuance to the series. While Crockett's perpetual stubble reflects his laid-back demeanor, Castillo's imposing firearm underscores his authority. These small yet deliberate touches contribute to the overall authenticity of the characters in this iconic 1980s television series. Ricardo Tubbs cruised the sun-soaked streets of Miami in style with his 1964 Cadillac DeVille, a classic convertible that became an iconic element of the 1980s television series. The show's unique allure extended beyond sleek visuals, delving into uncharted territory by incorporating popular music seamlessly into episodes. Universal's hefty investment of 10000 per episode granted them the rights to feature tracks from renowned artists like Eric Clapton, Phil Collins, Depeche Mode, and The Doors, among others. The series departed from the norm by avoiding the commonplace stock or made-for-TV music of its time. Instead, it embraced originality with background music specially composed by Jan Hammer and Tim Truman. 
the Miami Vice theme resonated globally, marking a milestone in the show's history. MCA Records capitalized on this success, releasing three soundtrack albums that not only featured popular songs from the series, but also included compositions by Hammer. A pivotal moment in the show, often cited as its hallmark, occurred in the pilot episode Brothers Keeper. As Crockett and Tubbs navigated the Miami night to a drug deal, Phil Collins in the air tonight set the tone for an unforgettable sequence. This innovative use of music became synonymous with the groundbreaking approach. Amidst the crime-solving and high-speed pursuits, Trudy's presence in the office added a touch of humor. Affectionately known as Big Booty Trudy, her nickname echoed through the precinct, showcasing the camaraderie among the characters. The commitment to authenticity extended to characters' details. Don Johnson's portrayal of Sonny Crockett went beyond acting, maintaining a signature two-day stubble with the help of a sideburn trimmer. Interestingly, Crockett's fictional combat history in Vietnam mirrored Johnson's real-life attempt to join the Marines, thwarted by a prior drug conviction. Lieutenant Martin Castillo, despite his administrative role, wielded an imposing Colt Trooper MKV-357 Magnum, subtly reinforcing authority over Crockett. These nuances from character traits to weapon choices added depth to the series, enhancing the overall authenticity of the iconic 1980s television show. In the tapestry of the show, the convergence of classic cars, groundbreaking music, and attention to character details created an enduring legacy that continues to resonate with audiences. The impact goes beyond the screen, embedding itself in popular culture and leaving an indelible mark on the realm of television entertainment. Don Johnson nearly exited the series after season two, prompting the studio to consider Mark Harmon or Treat Williams for Sonny Crockett's role. Michael Mann, the executive producer, convinced Johnson to stay, making him the highest paid actor in television history. This decision cost Johnson roles in major movies like The Untouchables and Die Hard. The pilot's dilapidated apartment building, later transformed into Gianni Versace's mansion, became a significant backdrop. Johnson, a friend to Versace, frequented the mansion. Ironically, a real Miami police officer, Greg Crow, who appeared as an extra, played a role in the SWAT raid that uncovered Versace's killer, Andrew Cunanan. Anthony Yurkovich, formerly of Hill Street Blues, wrote Miami Vice's pilot. Interestingly, he introduced a character named Sonny Crockett in the prior series, a 300-pound racist biker played by Dennis Berkeley. The same name carried over to the lead character in Miami Vice. Intriguingly, the show's initial backdrop, a rundown apartment, morphed into Versace's opulent mansion. This unexpected twist in real estate history adds a layer of intrigue to the series' legacy. Johnson's friendship with Versace, coupled with a real-life officer's connection to the murder investigation, intertwines the show with actual Miami events. Anthony Yurkovich's transition from Hill Street Blues to Miami Vice showcases the interconnectedness of TV production. The reuse of a character name hints at a writer's familiarity with his own creations, threading a subtle continuity between two distinct series.